exciting. It's October. I can't believe it's October. I can't believe it's October either. But all right, I want to talk about something I'm very excited about, and that's coming out <laughs> this week. I think it will already be out, maybe, by the time this episode goes up. Did either of you, and I can't remember, I feel like we would have talked about this, and Cassie, I bet you didn't, but did either one of you watch Haunting of Hill House? Um, Definitely yes. not. I watched like the first couple episodes, and then I was like, this is... and." Th- this was before I was dating Eric and it was way too scary for me. And I love Shirley Jackson. I yes, saw me too. the original and it wasn't, it was more of a thriller. Like Shirley Jackson's horror is like a thriller kind of thing. So I thought I can handle it. Broken neck lady. I was like, no, <laughs> no. Oh, well I loved it so much. much that I watched it twice. I watched it once by myself and then I made Anthony watch it and then I watched it with him a second time. So I'm super stoked because there's a like sequel question mark. I, I'm not even sure, but I saw the trailer and it's like the same cast, but I think they're playing different characters and mm-hmm. it's the haunting of Bly Manor. And I am so excited. I am yeah. so excited. <laughs> I cannot wait to watch this show. And you know I'm going to be watching it by myself on my laptop oh, yeah. at home at my parents' house because I won't I won't be in LA. So I'm going to be watching this thing alone. But I am super excited. I love this shit. I love October because that's when they hit us with all this shit. I can't wait. Yep. Well, apparently it's your I made season. some sort of deal with Eric a while back. Like, you know, I, I've talked about it before that I I – allow like one scary movie like scary movie a month where i'll watch with him and he gets to pick it out but apparently i've increased that i said you could have more in october so i will be going down the scary movie route this Mm. month too to because he's he's a halloween horror movie buff kind of thing so well and for those of us who like like this horror shit October this year, I mean, it's kind of like wah, wah, because we're not going to really have yeah. Halloween the way we typically mm-hmm. do. I haven't even thought about costumes because <laughs> for why, you why? know, like I for know. what? So I And it's our favorite. All I have is drowning my sorrows in watching <laughs> as many horror movies as I can possibly shove in there. So that's mm-hmm. the plan What was October. The sh- what was the show that I sent to you guys that I... It would look scary. I was like, have you seen this? Was what it was Wounded? That? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wounded. It was like a movie, but it looked scary. I have no, no idea I what that's about. Mm-mm. But I really want to see. I think it's Monsterland on Hulu. That shit looks really good, too. Ugh, there's so much good stuff coming out. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Well, there's also a Chris Watts documentary that I'm. Oh, Ooh, God. dear. I mean, I. I'm, Speaking of scary. I want to watch that, but I also feel like what else is there to know about that case? Right. Like, I feel like we all know everything already. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we watched it happen live. I covered it on the show, so I feel like I don't know if I I want to do that journey again. Yeah. It feels like, you know, and people are like, oh, well, they show, uh, you know, the video footage of this and that. And I'm like, they, I've seen documentaries where they do show all that. I you know i don't there's uh yeah well i mean i, I, don't I, think I can. let's be real i'll probably watch it <laughs> i'll probably <laughs> watch it because i mean how many repetitive true crime documentaries have i seen like how many true crime documentaries on ted bundy have i seen you know and i know these oh, cases yeah. like True. front ways and back ways but i will watch it anyway like just mm-hmm. thinking like hey maybe maybe I'll get some new info or something, you know? And a a good true crime doc is like, I mean, even the story that I'm doing later, I was like, holy shit, have we done this one? I had to open the doc up and be like, oh my God, this is so familiar. I know, I know we've done this one. Turns out it was just a forensic files episode that I'd watched before. Right. I'm like we haven't done this one. I but I was I was watching a dateline and I was like, Oh God, yes, yes, yes. And by the way, thank you to all the um listeners <laughs> who chimed in and told me all the different ways that I could watch Dateline, which is really great. Um 
But yeah, I was like, oh my God, I, I want to do this so bad, but I know we've done it. I know we've done it. And then that, it just I turns feel like out. that happens to all of us all of the time. We started keeping a yeah. doc, you know, because we're however many episodes of this podcast deep at this point. So we had to keep, we keep our own Google Sheets of all of the episodes and all of the crazy and loves that we do so that we can cross reference. Because also, if you're like me and you're like listening to Dateline, while you work out or do the dishes or whatever, a lot of those stories can end up sounding so similar. And then you get mm-hmm. totally confused in your head about, <laughs> you know, have I heard this one before? How does this one end? Is it like this or is it like this? Did we do it on my worst date? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. But yeah, so I'm I'm excited. October, There there are a lot of things actually coming out this month that and this is all that we have to look forward to you know is new stuff on tv <laughs> just <laughs> due to where we're at I mean, it certainly beats the presidential debate Ooh. Oh. Woof. Um, Woof. yeah <laughs> uh, let's just yikes. say I woke up with a hangover oh. on Wednesday that's uh, yeah. speaking oh we got to say of about yikes that. on bikes yeah. Speaking of Yikes on Bikes, we have new merch in our merch store. So we have a new Yikes on Bikes t-shirt for my worst date merch. It is, I think it's cute. I think it's fun. I think it's exactly. Fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So go, uh, you can go to mywordstatepodcast.com. You can grab that. We also have new patrons. Yeah, we do. We do have new patrons. So... We would like to give a big shout out to man. I, okay, I was thinking about this earlier. How did I get looped <laughs> into doing the names? Because I always butcher them. Like I've, I always butcher them. We've gotten like more than one message where they're like, "Keegan totally butchered my name. It's fine, but she totally butchered it." <laughs> so you know, apologies in advance. Um, th- we want to give a big shout out to Candy Navaretti. Navaretti, maybe, is how you pronounce your last name. If I'm wrong, feel free to reach out and let me know. But thank you so much for joining us. Uh, And we would also like to give a shout out to Laura Pico, or is it Picot, again? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) But either way, you know who you are. And thank you so much for joining us. And we also uh, got another patron this week, Donna Harrison. That's a name I know how to pronounce. So Donna, Mm -hmm. welcome to the (laughs) Patreon family. We are so excited to have you. And I know that Cassie has been working hard to get all of the uh, rewards out to you guys. So since out today. Yeah. And if there's any. Again, if there's anything that you uh, want for bonus content, if you have suggestions, we are always open to hearing those. Uh, for those of you at the $5 and up level, we do a Crazy and Love movie episode every single month. If you have suggestions for movies you would like to hear us talk about more often than not completely rip apart, please reach out and <laughs> let us know. Nice. My best friend's wedding. There's our next it one. It is, right? yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Which I'm excited about movie. personally. Me too. Me too. Uh, well, uh, fuck Mary Kill. I know. Speaking of suggestions, I know that we got a suggestion in okay. our our email um, from one of our listeners was saying, hey, ladies. So the Netflix documentary, The Last Dance, has been out for a while, which I loved. And right. Cassie, you're kind of the sports gal of the podcast but i am i am and i hate basketball unfortunately oh, i love Sorry. basketball of sports i like basketball me too and i hate's aggressive hate is an aggressive word i it's just not, it's not one your of my thing. favorites dude it is right. a great documentary though that documentary oh, yeah. series was really really interesting to me and i thought it was it was and I think we talked about it. Was it was such a big part of our childhood. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Michael Jordan. I mean, that, that, this is truly when, for I guess for us, when we were growing up, this is when basketball was really great. I love. I was a big Scottie Pippen fan, but I, I deep down was a Boston Celtics girl. So. so her fuck, Mary kill suggestion is Michael Jordan, Scottie mm-hmm. Pippen, and Dennis Perfect. Rodman. Okay. I got it. I'm already there. I'll go first. 
Go for it. If you if you're ready, I'm, I'm ready. ready. I am gonna fuck Dennis Rodman because that looks like a fucking party. Oh my! That God. man is wild. He's not afraid to just do his thing. I'm you excited. You are gonna wake up at a Walmart in Kansas with no. If I wake up, <laughs> no idea how the fuck you got there. You'd be like calling me you'll be like girl i'm in wichita and i'd be like you fucked dennis rodman didn't you <laughs> god damn god damn it you fucked dennis rodman again didn't you uh so yeah i'm gonna fuck dennis rodman i am going to marry scotty pippen because i am in love with scotty pippen i always thought he was super hot always thought he was underrated i think he is i here's the thing i'll say about scotty good talented supportive team player he is also not the one who has to be the star you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like he's okay like sharing the limelight he doesn't have to it's not got to be all about him which is perfect for me because it's it's got to be all about me <laughs> um which is why i'm gonna have to kill michael jordan um and i like michael jordan i think he's a fucking of all time amazing top top tier athlete unequivocally one of the best basketball players period of all time but that documentary um, unfortunately, showed you like exactly what you have to do and the kind of personality you have to be to be the greatest not not just yeah. basketball but at anything because uh, sure. there's that documentary um god about dr dre and the other guy so uh, good which is yes. Um, I f- the name escapes me right now. I've defiant, seen it too, though. But yeah, I, I can't ones. remember. Defiant yet. ones. Mm-hmm. And it's like that personality type where someone is so good that they become the greatest in the world at it. It's, it's so driven and I think would just be so hard to live with. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. And it's a combination of what it takes to get there. And then also the way that people treat you like I actually have a real problem with sports culture in the way that we treat these people right because it has it's impossible it's incredible that LeBron is as normal as he is right yeah being as especially considering how young as he is and that he was incredible from such a young age but in general I you can't hear or worship these people the way that we do with sports figures and expect them to be normal. Like, of course, Mm -hmm. like, and when you're somebody like Michael Jordan, who had the perfect combination of drive and talent and then celebrity on top of that, Mm -hmm. of course, he's got to be insufferable. I mean, he he would Mm -hmm. have to be. I would be really surprised if he wasn't. And it's almost preservation like though i mean I, I feel like maybe you have to be like you said have to be that way i don't know yeah 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 i think it, i think it's a combination of of everything and this fuck mary kill is very hard for me mm-hmm. <laughs> actually it's very hard because you know speaking of that hero worship even though i have a major issue with the, the way that we do that um and i not to get on my high horse, but I think all that celebrity stuff, it, it's it's it causes more harm than good to society. I think it's net negative. However, having been a young black child in the 90s. <laughs> Michael Jordan was your everything. Jam. everything. Michael Jordan he was the was, space jam. <laughs> yes, he was. Yeah, he was. He was the space jam. And I will stand that movie all day, every day of my <laughs> life. Um, but it so. <laughs> I feel like what you did, Cassie, is is the right thing to do. But the idea of thinking about killing it. Michael Jordan is like I've just betrayed the culture. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so I got to think about that for a second. And Dennis Rodman. I actually really like Dennis Rodman. I really do. I like Dennis Rodman because you think about what he was doing. It was so progressive Crazy. and ahead of his time. The way yep. that he like talked about being no fuck. He was gender fluid before anyone knew what gender fluid was. He's like, I'm That's gonna right. wa- I'm gonna paint my nails, I'm gonna wear dresses. And he was very open about doing it because he felt comfortable that way, uh, and partially because he was raised by a bunch of women. And you he know, doesn't give a fuck and I love it. And I and I, I love, love it. it. However, 
he does have a questionable relationship with North Korean dictators that I'm not so- fully on board with. So <laughs> <laughs> the least problematic yeah, of Here we are. these three is Scotty Pippen. So I'm going to have but, to yes. lock that down. <laughs> but Scotty, heart. Scotty, man, it broke Love my him. heart in the documentary to hear how vastly underpaid he was. It was... <sighs> And there, he was just trapped in that. And I imagine the the anger, and it it was it was kind of palpable in the interview. He's he's pretty soft spoken, and I fucking love Scottie Pippen. Out of all of them, I'm like, oh, I love the Scottie. hottest. Yes, yeah, super super hot. And but yeah, that resentment. I I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know. God, this is a hard. This FMK. is super hard. It's super, super hard because every time I think I know what I'm going to do. I just went quick and with my gut. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm glad I got and it off my plate because time... I just just kick it out. You know, I'm going to have a wild freaky night with Michael Jordan, actually. See, I was trying to decide if I wanted to fuck Michael Jordan just so I could say I fucked Michael Jordan. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Just so you can like put that on your resume, mm-hmm. that that's like something that you did. I don't even necessarily think it's going to be good because he's probably <laughs> slept with so many people I, right. and he's been the greatest of all time for so long that I don't but, know that he puts the work in. Well, but he's a perfectionist. How you, how you do one thing is how you You're do everything. You're right. He is a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. Okay. And somebody with that and kind of drive ego. that has to be the greatest, that has to have that ego. I'm sure he brings that to the bedroom. And, uh, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna get tore up by Michael <laughs> Jordan. I'm not gonna be able to walk for like two days. It's gonna be amazing. So okay. I'm, I'm fucking Michael Jordan. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, you know, I am gonna marry. Dennis Rodman. Whoa. What? Listen. Wait. In Wichita? Yep. <laughs> Dennis yep. Rodman is definitely going to be the guy who tells you about his alien abduction experience, though, Christina. And we had this yes. conversation on the shorty. Is that what Dude. you really want? I want a life of laughter and surprises Love. and passion and fucking shenanigans. Weirdness. Just fully weird. And I just... I'm once again, this guy has confidence. He is 100% has always been fully himself, even when people didn't understand that. Like, I just I think that quality is so sexy. I think it's so I'm just in awe of the bravery that that takes. And so, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to marry Dennis Rodman. We'll try Mm. to talk him out of the whole like North Korea thing, because I just I don't know. But uh (laughs) But yeah, it pains me to say it, and that's why this one is so hard. Is because Scottie Pippen seems like he's the nicest. The one that's, he's the nicest. You're gonna kill Scottie Pippen. I'm killing Scottie Pippen. Yep. Oh God, I haven't even decided who I'm fucking and who I'm killing yet. I I, I feel like this is impossible. I feel like it's truly impossible. I because wow. I, I don't feel comfortable killing any of them. Like I really. Don't. Scotty Pippen is so nice. And just like everything we've already said about Dennis Rodman, I admire that about him so much. And Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. Like, how do you... I I guess... This is a good FMK. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's a wonderful suggestion. Um, Yeah, I got to shout... I got to shout her out. Um, It was Samantha. Hold on. I'm going to get her name. It is a really good suggestion. Samantha Scheller. Samantha Scheller. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. (laughs) But I just feel like I'm going to have a better time with Dennis Rodman. Like, I think we're going to have a better night. I think it will be fun. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be able, he's going to say some wild shit, which will also be fun. Like, it'll be a fun evening for me. Whereas, like, the sex might be good with Michael Jordan because of all those things that you said. But I don't think the evening will be as enjoyable because he's, that's right. He gambles, too. So I'm like, I'm going to fuck Michael Jordan in Vegas. (laughs) I was thinking Dennis Rodman in Vegas. Uh, yeah, that's uh, God. true. I feel, I feel 
icky um, having to make that that call. But at the end of the day, I got to go with my gut. And my gut tells me that me and Dennis Robin are going to have a much better time. Um, but mm-hmm. me and Scotty Pippen are going to have a long and happy marriage. So that's right. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You can't say you don't have to say what you're going to do with Michael. It's cool. I, I won't. It's cool. We can skip that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll just skip it right right past it. We already know what's going to happen. It's implied. It's implied. I won't yeah. say the words. I can't bring myself nope. to say the words. And oh. you don't have to. This is our podcast. <laughs> my worst date. I'm Cassie. I'm Keegan. I'm Christina. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was a good suggestion. So, yeah, keep them coming. That's That's fun. Oh, do we have uh, anything else to talk about for our week or should we just take five and come back with stories? I've literally done nothing this week but prepare <laughs> to leave town. Like that's all I've done. It's taken me all week to pack because what do you even bring for a month? Like I I, I, I feel unprepared. So that's all I've done. I, I've barely left my house at all. Well, I've been job hunting like it's my full time job. And uh, I did apply for a position in Barcelona by accident. Um, was it by so accident or was, was it your subconscious being like, let's <laughs> get the fuck out of here? <laughs> was it? Maybe it wasn't. I, I I, mean, there is a possibility I don't get this job. It is in Barcelona. <laughs> Barcelona. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, mm-hmm. no, I just I moved this week. That's that's what I did. Do you know how much shit you accumulate in 10 years at a place? It's, oh my god. I thought I didn't have shit and I'm like, "Oh my god. It's it's unreal." They I'm, of I'm telling you, have. the best advice I can give to people who come from hoarder families like mine is move every couple of years cuz I have moved mm. every couple of years. I've lived in LA for almost 10 years now. This is my 7th apartment. So mm. I've moved every couple of years and uh, it really stops you from accumulating too much because every <laughs> time you move, you get rid of shit. If you stay in one place for too long, you're going to have stuff in the back of that closet that you didn't remember you had for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so much shit. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I've been doing. So Ugh. I feel like I go through and reorganize my shit like every six months as it is. Regardless of movie. I do not. Just who I am. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, well, let's take five and then we'll come back with stories. Okay. Sounds good. And we're back. All right, right, Christina, kick us off. Okay. So this one comes from Reddit. <laughs> he says, I had met a pretty cool girl on Tinder. And after a few days of getting to know one another, we agreed to finally meet up. I head over to hers and she was fun to talk to, beautiful, the whole nine yards. We ended up going to a Sonic, the fast food place, to get get an ice cream and just walked around for a while having a grand old time. Night came to an end, awesome first date, we agreed to meet up the following week. Now, this is where things went wrong. Of course Uh it is. During that week, I started taking Chantix to help me quit smoking. Which oh, has no. some pretty gnarly side effects. Oh no, is he gonna have like wild ass dreams? When Anthony was on that shit, he had the most oh, vivid no. like terrors, like night terrors. Before I had even left, I had an upset stomach, which oh. I had attributed to being a tad bit nervous. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. I didn't even know this was a side effect of Chantix. <laughs> Whatever, drink some Pepto. Okay, a lot of Pepto. Uh, the entire bottle. No! I was, <gasps> no! I was excited to see her again and started driving. I'm feeling way worse when I pick her up, but think <gasps> I can just push through it and have a nice dinner with an awesome girl, right? Wrong. No. Trigger warning. Christina, I feel like you look for these. I really do. I'm like, you're I think she looks for the words trigger warning. We get about three miles into the downtown portion of a college town and every parking spot is taken with bumper to bumper traffic. <gasps> All of a sudden, I feel it coming. <gasps> uh, and as no. politely as possible, while mid-conversation, I puke in my mouth. <gasps> uh, oh. 
I was forced to swallow uh, said puke two oh to three separate times. Oh my all god! While she was asking me questions, oh my god! None the wise. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, no. man. That is gnarly. I hate that. That is terrible. Oh my god! I think I've I've had. Okay, I like don't even want to talk about it. I think I have swallowed my puke one time, like been forced to, and yeah. it is the least pleasant experience yeah. ever. And the fact that he did this three times, like, bro, is your esophagus okay? Like, are you all right? Ugh. Like the acid, the acidity, <laughs> my dude. Oh, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. The last time I did that, I think, was after my last Jaeger shot. Uh, and I was ooh. like, never oh. again. Oh, my I God, no. So it was like licorice-flavored vomit. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Ew. I've never hated anything more. That's <laughs> disgusting. I've managed to finally gasp out, hey, I think I'm getting sick. Can we reschedule? <laughs> Which she graciously agreed to. Now for the Chantix. Chantix has a side effect of causing abdominal bloating and diarrhea. (laughs) Oh, no. Which my body took full advantage of at this particular moment. No. Halfway back to hers, I feel that gurgling in my stomach and realize I probably have less than 30 seconds to find a bathroom. (gasps) I barely turn off the road before I'm opening my door and jumping out of my car to sprint across a Starbucks parking lot to get it. <gasps> oh, man, those poor Starbucks oh, employees. No. He tore that bathroom up. You know he did. Oh. <laughs> Some 15-year-old is going to have to clean that later. <laughs> barely oh. in the nick of time, I get my pants down in the restroom and, yeah, we'll keep it PG. Roughly 45 45- minutes to oh, an hour stop. later stop <laughs> oh I sh- no sheepishly walk out of the bathroom only to run into my date for the night drinking a coffee and eating a muffin just staring at me oh my god oh, no <laughs> to be honest i would have done the same thing if i was her i'd be like look 45 yeah. minutes is too long to be sitting in your truck dude i need to come inside and have a mocha or something i call the lift 45 minutes are you kidding me i'm out she oh. quietly asked me to take her home and from the second I said of course we have never spoken again oh my god so they had a silent ride home too oh man oh no that poor man okay that sucks (sighs) I'll go next I took him to a baseball game where he proceeded to pronounce loudly to anyone and everyone around us that we were an quote item this is a first date he pulled out a very, <laughs> I don't know why this made me laugh. Okay. He pulled out a very large bag of peanuts with the shells and started eating them with the shells still on. <laughs> Wait. Wait. I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, you eat peanuts at a game. No. No, he put the whole he thing the sh- with the shell in his mouth. <laughs> Who raised just you? Like how eating you, them how like do you a not know horse. How to peanuts. <laughs> what is the fucking wrong with you? It's so weird. It's so weird. He had pieces of so shell weird. all over his face while he kept asking oh. my friends if they wanted any, occasionally oh. spitting up nut particles on them, much to their horror Ooh. and my extreme embarrassment. Oh my god. You I'm took this dying. dude around your friends on a first date i I hate this (laughs) he then tried getting into a full-on fight with me about a hypothetical situation where we would be caught on the kiss cam i'm just saying if we're on it we gotta go hard (laughs) no and i was just mouth sitting there cringing and grinding my teeth into oblivion <laughs> mm. i i don't like that either like that excuse of like well we're on kiss cam so we have to it's like no we don't Mm-mm. 
He drank so much that he never really saw the game, had to keep getting up to go to the stadium bar, and he kept asking for my ID so he could double fist his $10 Coors Lights. He probably spent $100 on Coors <gasps> in the first few hours. Coors is oh. like, what? What? How much does like a Coors beer cost? Like five max? Eight at a game, maybe eight. God damn. But still, that's like still. Ten, 10 beers. Yeah. It's a lot. That's a lot. Um, he chugged, In the first hour. Yeah, it, yeah. He chugged two beers on our way out and kept refusing to let me walk on a certain side of the sidewalk because, quote, a man walks on this side. It's his duty okay. to a lady. Okay. <laughs> he started Gross. insulting women as we were walking past to get to my car. I was ready to punch him in the mouth, but he was six seven, and I just wanted to take him home and forget the night ever happened. Pause, because I feel like this is something we need to discuss. Ladies, Mm. stop giving tall men a pass because they're tall. Mm. Stop it. I see you. I see you doing it. Like I and people laugh about it. Like there was an overheard L.A. where a girl was talking about how her date was like six, seven. And her friend was like, well, is he cute? And she's like, he's six, seven. I don't even think I've looked at his face yet. Stop doing that. That they just won a genetic lottery that allows them to be tall. It doesn't mean they're not fucking absolute pieces of shit. Okay? All right. Exactly. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> he um he drunkenly started insulting right? Okay, yeah. He drunkenly started insulting my driving while we were in post game traffic and kept trying to open the door to get out and drive instead of me. This is one of my biggest pet peeves somebody complaining about my driving like it like whenever I was young I got into like like when I was a teenager like 16 17 I got into a few like fender benders and my family has never let it live like let me live it down and they always say like oh you know like Keegan's a bad driver and it gets under my skin in the worst way. If if yep. a man did that to me on a date, it would be like, it's like a trigger for me. I absolutely would be furious. <laughs> um, also, like, honestly, all the stuff that he did leading up to getting in the car. Okay, this is like a first date and all this fucking shit has happened. Like, honestly, like, is he getting into your car? No, no. Right. I don't care. I gave you a Get ride an there. Ubered, bro. Like, honestly, like, if he started like insulting women, he got belligerently drunk. You're keeping your nut mouth out of my car. <laughs> no. <laughs> Get your dirty nut mouth out of my car. Um, okay. He insults my career, tells me I couldn't possibly keep up with the quote manly job I have, but don't worry, babe. It's not because you're not great. It's just that it's too hard for you, is all I'm saying. <sighs> Wow. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Um, I, I fucking hate this guy. I finally pull up to his house and I'm white knuckling it to the point where my hands are nearly numb. I tell him to get out and he asks me to come in. I say absolutely not. And he lunged at me to kiss me. He sort of licks my face. <laughs> Ew. Fuck off. And I literally no. shoved him out of my car onto the street and sped off. The next day, he texts me, hey, had a great time. Would love to see you again. I said, your behavior was ridiculous. Please never contact me again. He responds, cool. Well, if you ever want to get a beard, let me know. Hard eyes emoji. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, my. Okay. I mean, it's better pass, than some of the other. Hard pass. <laughs> Better than some of the other people who get rejected and their them their comebacks. Yeah, but you know? like, what kind of de- like? I always think that because we've had several stories like this where it ends this way, and I I'm like, what kind of delusion are you under? You're in tall guy delusion where people have never yeah. been straight with you in your whole life, and you just assume everything's a compliment. Stop it. Well, the other thing too that I've noticed is that I have a very clear face of when I am irritated or pissed off Mm -hmm. or like I I show my emotions on my face. It's not hiding. It's not hiding at all. You can definitely tell. But that's not the case for everybody. You know what I mean? And especially for 
um, for women, I think we're taught to mask our emotions uh, a lot more than men are. So there are times where I know I've, I have talked to girls who were like, yeah, I'm like, I was really upset. And I'm like, I would not have known that. You know what I mean? Like, they're just like, yeah. You know what I mean? Where I'm just like, yeah, but I, like, I, even I after sometimes, but there, after she called it out, it you know what I mean? Like, cause she sent him a response that was like, your oh, behavior yeah, was ridiculous that. and I don't want to see you again. So to throw out the hard eye emoji after that conversation right. feels Oblivious. Like, what is that? Yeah, what is that? I can't even fathom Listen, being that disconnected. I still like it better than the assholes who are like, well, fuck you, cunt, you know? Oh, yeah. I, it's much better than that. I'm like, I'll take this dude's obliviousness uh, over uh, that douchey it's insult all shit. It's very, in very bad. It's <laughs> all very bad. <laughs> It's it's also Ugh. it's also that whole thing of like if you haven't talked to somebody for a year, like a that person has no idea who you are when you text them again out of the blue. You know what I right? mean? So that weirds me out too. People who think to text somebody a year later, like, hey, what's up? I don't know. Like, I I really what? do. I feel like some people just don't have that. They just don't have whatever that is, that kind of like self analyzing understanding. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. It's so completely foreign to me because it's so counter to the way I operate. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I examine everything I do. I feel like I know if I'm making somebody uncomfortable. Like, I don't know. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> nut mouth. Ugh. Ugh. Nut mouth. Ugh. Dirty nut mouth. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, obligatory. This happened a long time ago. I'm assuming to so that we all understand she probably wasn't wearing a mask or whatever. <laughs> I was a single mom who was too busy for a relationship. My friends were always trying to hook me up with someone for some strange reason. They talked to me. They talked me into going on a blind date. Texting with the guy to make plans went smoothly. We were going to go eat out, eat dinner, then a movie. Boring, but typical. He picked me up at my house. You he know what? I'll take a boring handsome. date after some of this shit that we've heard. Like, oh, that's, exactly. give me dinner and a movie all day, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> any day. He was fairly handsome and seemed nice. On the way to the restaurant, we were caught in heavy traffic due to an event at a large local arena. No big deal, right? It happens. Well, dude became quite frustrated with the traffic and decided to yell at someone (laughs) who had forced their way in front of him. He goes full crazy guy, screaming with his head and part of his upper body completely out of the window. Oh, I'm (laughs) rethinking this day already due to his angry response. He continued his rant. And at one point, he starts farting while yelling. (laughs) It was... (laughs) The angriest. <laughs> it was the angriest butt trumpet I've ever heard. It wasn't a silent. It wasn't a silent, but it was deadly. Here I am, stuck in the car with this guy's ass, which is yelling at me in a loud, smelly language as his upper body screamed out the window. As his ass continues to scream out, ass cheeks vibrating, smelly farts at me. I can't help but laugh. I'm thinking, I know he's angry and shouting, but he has to feel his ass vibrating like he's involuntar- involuntarily in a twerking contest. He has to know. I'm convinced yeah, you know, I'm on a date. You know. You know. You gotta know. I've never been ass- so angry that like I wouldn't have picked up on that. Ever. <laughs> Dude, Can you imagine I, to his body's out the window? So his ass is facing. Absolutely. You. I'm getting out of that car immediately. A tuck and roll. A tuck and roll. First of all, there's nothing more unattractive than somebody losing their temper oh, at traffic. No shit. I no, think, no. I think it's or so. At anything. Like, I feel yeah. like, have you ever been with someone who you think is normal and then they rage lose their shit yeah about like Ugh. something stupid it's, a- so, it's, it's so gross to me it is so I mean, unattractive full body out of the car yelling it's just so next that's level so bullshit. unnecessary and we're from la okay i have definitely okay. yelled profanities within my oh, yeah. car mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. at passerbys okay i definitely have because traffic is that bad and it is a must to keep your sanity but i would never do it on a date ever like you hide your crazy hide your crazy for a little (laughs) while at least and i would never crazy and hold your farts that's right that's right (laughs) amen have your body out of your car yelling is just so i mean and honestly again the way that my anxiety (laughs) is set up like I could never like I (laughs) has this ever happened to you one time when I was driving I uh, was yelling shit out like yelling about the traffic or whatever and realized that my window was down oh and like the car next to me was like um (laughs) hi (laughs) and you just gotta like kind of slowly roll the window back up pretend like you don't see them you're like eyes in front of you eyes in front of you (laughs) but this isn't about you speaking of farting i was in bed bath beyond like last (laughs) week and there was a guy in front of us that was being like all kind of like huffy you know like waiting in line or whatever Mm -hmm. and he was like he went to make like this like huff sound or whatever, but then he ripped ass. No. Ripped no. ass. He was trying to be all like, like That is so embarrassing. And he ripped a loud ass. And my eyes, I just wanted to die. I turned around and looked at Eric. I made that eye contact like something just happened. Talk to me about it when we're out of here. And I literally like, teared up because i was trying not to laugh did so he hard react at all like did what no he just he, pretended like he, it didn't happen he just pretended like it didn't happen although like, like i here, fucking happen i would pretend I like there. it didn't happen too i'd be like have you seen that that youtube video of that little girl <laughs> there's a, a youtube video i'll try and find it because both of you would appreciate it so much Of a little girl who's doing like, she's playing YouTuber, right? She's probably like seven or something. And she's like, oh, this is my closet, whatever. And then you hear the loudest fart. And then she tried to blame it on a ghost. She was like, did you guys hear that? Oh, I'm so scared right now. (laughs) It must have been a ghost. It's like, baby girl. (laughs) Baby girl, you just ripped ass. (laughs) <laughs> oh it's so funny okay uh, i'm so sorry okay sorry <laughs> by the time he stopped yelling and sat back in his car i was laughing hysterically in tears <laughs> mascara eyeliner running down my face he actually asked me what was so funny and i said i feel attacked by your angry butt trumpet i pieced together the sentence between my hysterical laughs i'm finding this hilarious and assume he's going to join me in laughing it off no no nope. nope. that man has I rage issues i would not think that he would find that funny you, you are in danger <laughs> you're in it's danger, danger girl. Room. He got upset. I told him that this date was over to take me back home. He then began to rage about wasting his time, and I just sat there giggling. I had awkward giggles all the way back to my house. When we pulled up to my driveway, he said, thanks for wasting my time, to which I responded, thanks for the angry farts. And I never did find out if he was aware he was gassing me while screaming in the car traffic. Wow. Oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Fuck Wow. Incredible. That's amazing. Uh, it is. Uh, Anyways, are you guys ready for Crazy in Love? Yes. I'm, I'm super so excited. Ready. Okay. So I found one that I am really excited about that you guys will be infuriated by because I found the world's most incompetent criminal. Oh, no. Whoa. You are going to be <laughs> furious. Also, there is a trigger warning on uh death obviously because it is a murder but also death of a child so okay skip this Mm -hmm. one if if you're sensitive to that kind of thing because it's pretty fucking awful but let me set the scene first of all this happens in stowe ohio near whoa akron and basically it's 2009 People are living their life. They're doing their thing. Scott Perk is married to a wonderful woman. He's got two kids, 16 and 12. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, the unthinkable happens. His house (gasps) 
catches on fire. Oh, girl. Enormous, quick moving blaze. It's fucking crazy. This is a dateline, isn't it? It is. Oh, I it's, think I know. Mm, it's mm, it's mm, date, mm, I think I mm, date. Dateline Secrets from the Grave. Oh, it's I also love it. <gasps> Forensic Files 2 episode. And dude, this beginning part is what got me. So he has gotten his whole family out of this burning inferno. And brave cop cops like get this 911 call where the 16 year old is like our house is on fire that kind of thing they're like oh okay all right they go over they're at a neighbor's house they're safe it's like cold outside it's it's march so it's still like you know it's cold in ohio in march but um they get scott outside and they're like what the fuck happened tonight dude and scott just diarrheas of the mouth at -hmm. these cops the he starts talking to these cops not just first of all he's like there was like a loud explosion or whatever he starts talking about the fire they're like okay well what what happened tonight he's like well my wife tammy was out with her boyfriend because we're swingers and Mm -hmm. they went on a date and she brought me their leftovers. My favorite home. detail, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like, no he's big like, deal. I had some orange chicken. <laughs> I had some <laughs> leftover soup, salad, and breadsticks from the Olive Garden <laughs> from my wife's date, which is like, again, we don't find it. Yeah. But yum. Let's, but whatever. Right. The cops are like, okay, bro. So you're eating your wife's date's leftovers. Okay, Just a cool. weird detail cool, cool, to cool. like, why? <laughs> why did they need to know that? Like, it's such a strange. <laughs> thing to throw in <laughs> well, and then even more and he just like starts talking to them and he's like yeah you know this is just icing on the cake because i just lost my job like six days ago <laughs> and i'm having so many money problems and it's the cops crazy. are like just writing that shit down mm-hmm. they're like motive 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 <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> little mm-hmm. notebooks they're like hold on now let me get a bigger one <laughs> like, <laughs> so He's like, he's like, so yeah, I just lost my job like six days ago. And oh my God, you know, if this house burned down, I figured out that I would only owe $70,000. And he's like, it's, it's lucky too, because just a few days ago, I actually videotaped all the like important shit Sir. that I had in the house. My guy, like, you've not okay. seen a single episode of Dateline in Anything. your life. <laughs> like, Meanwhile, you haven't yeah. seen Anything. Not even like a law and order, like not even a, not even right. a matlock, you know. No. <laughs> Meanwhile, this detective is like literally in in both both the forensic files and the Dateline is like I could not figure out why he was telling me all this shit. I didn't ask him questions. We didn't have. We suspected it might be arson because like. There was gasoline all over, like, the gas line, and the gas line was broken, just spewing, like, natural gas out. But he's like, we weren't thinking it was him, but he just, like, laid the groundwork. And But Scott Perk was not done. He was chatty Cathy in the back of the wow. warm cop car, and he's, like, treating it like he's on the therapist couch. What is like, that? Like, again, like, what is that in your personality that you think this is a good idea? I'm just going to tell the cops my whole life story. And so he goes in to say he starts talking about his first wife, Meg, (laughs) who back in 1985 committed suicide when she was nine Mm -hmm. months pregnant. Committed suicide. You know, just this guy's had a real tough life is what. Yeah. And I'm sure he was, I mean, if I remember correctly, that's kind of how he was framing it to the cops. Like, right. oh, woe is me. Like, can you believe it? Like, my life has just been so hard. You should take pity on me. One thing after another. Right. So meanwhile, this guy, he is quoted in the dateline. He's like, I'm already kind of thinking by now that this guy's an arsonist. And as soon as he brought up his wife's suicide, now I'm thinking, is he a murderer? And so he starts asking him questions about his wife first wife's suicide and apparently back in 1985 he's married to this girl named meg who like he says he's taking a bath one morning like she's not feeling good so he made her a doctor's appointment he's sitting chilling in the bath and he 
sees her walk past the bathroom door. And then four or five minutes later, he gets out of the tub and (laughs) she is hanging over the stairway. And so he cuts her down with a steak knife, tries to do CPR on her. The baby dies that day. Meg never regains consciousness and passes away 24 hours later. I really feel like it's not typical for people to commit suicide like that when someone else is in the, uh, like, when they're home. exactly what they said. It is not typical for people to hang themselves. when so. First of all, it's not typical for, like, women to do it, and especially, like, Mm -mm. nine months pregnant. Um about ready to give birth and secondly like if someone else is home that's like something that you do by yourself yeah exactly so it was just really weird but if you haven't seen there's a a last week tonight with john oliver that talks about the coroner system in america is that if you live in a rural part of this great united states that we have (laughs) chances are you have a coroner and not like a medical examiner or anything. Mm-hmm. He explains it much better and much more entertaining than I will. And it's not really the place. But anyway, the coroner who didn't really have any medical training or anything was just like, that's right. Yep. Suicide. Signed <laughs> Peace. The death certificate. Bye. <laughs> Deuces. I got a golf game to go to. And, and then it was beep, beep, boom, done, which takes us all the way back to 2009 in the back of the cop car. So, Detective Ken, who's written all this stuff down that this guy's just vomiting out of his mouth, is like, that's a lot to go on. So he calls his buddy from the fire station. His, his name's like Jim. Uh, of course I it is. Kept it up by I, I, Jim from Ohio. I got no I got way. So I got no so, way. I got so excited about telling the story that I put the notes down because I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, no, I just need to tell you guys. Um, so. He's like, all right, bro, here's everything Scott just told me. And Jim's like, you know what's even weirder? That whole house burnt all to shit. Their van is parked down the driveway. (laughs) And it's got old family recipes in it and old family photos. And he's like, where were you going in the van? And he's like, oh, yeah, like. My son and I were gonna go like take a trip or whatever. And he's like, and you need all, all of your- these heirloom like family photo <laughs> albums to go camping. Cool, mm. cool, cool, cool. cool. So Jim- sounds legit. Jim- yeah. Jim's like, all right, bro, I'll take the arson investigation. You look up on that that suicide that happened like back in eighty five. So Detective Ken's like, all right. I'm going to call up Akron police. And he's like, I got to be a little bit gentle with them because it's a closed case, you know, and you're calling up, you know, the police and being like, hey, I think you messed something up. Step it on some egos. Step it on some fifis. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But Akron police were actually pretty cool about it. I guess they were like, sure. Check out the file, you know, whatever. So he looks and like most of the evidence has been destroyed by this part. This is like 30 years later. You know what I mean? So like they didn't keep shit around from a closed case. Like a right. lot of the crime photos, any evidence that could be tested, all that shit was thrown away ages ago. And but he was able to find like one photo where he looked at her neck and he's like clear as day. He's like that is belt mark. That's not a rope mark. It's a belt mark. And it's going the wrong direction. It's not mm-hmm. pulled up like towards her it's head. As if she's is pulled, it goes down her back. Do you ever wonder how many cases this is something that could keep me up at night if I started thinking about it at the wrong time. Do you ever wonder like how many cases like how many murderers have just like gotten away with murder over like dumb shit like this that was overlooked? Mm-hmm. Like this guy is such an idiot. It's incredible that he got away with that. Like Oh, I for sure and he for sure like caught himself. It's so fucking bizarre if, to me. Or if he just hadn't done the other thing, you know, he would have ha- gotten away with having murdered his first wife. Like there are probably so many people anytime, well, nobody is cuz we're in cor- We're in Corona times now. But like before that, if you're in a stadium, what percentage of those people have killed someone and just gotten away with it because somebody's just been like, man, don't feel like doing my job today. (laughs) Like, right. 
No, your the actual like solve rate on murders, I am terrified to see what that actually is because I feel mm-hmm. like we're accustomed from watching Dateline, Law and Order, Criminal Minds, the thousands of crime shows. Right, CSI, where we see it wrapped up in two days, the entire yep. thing. Mm-hmm. That we're like, oh, if you murder, like it gets solved. It motherfucking doesn't. A lot of times it doesn't. People fucking die and everyone's like all shoulders. They don't know what happened. So, <laughs> Ooh. Well, that's a so, fun thought. Okay. Exactly. I'm going to go so, down that with my anxiety later today. So Ken's like, well, this is not a fucking rope. This is crazy. And they're they're piecing it together. It takes time. Almost a year has gone past. And then, like, right around the corner from Scott's house, in the middle of the night, fucking blaze happens. Somebody's house is on fire. This girl, Amy, gets a phone call. She had happened to be staying at her boyfriend's house that night after working a double. She gets a call in the middle of the night from someone who's like, girl, your house is on fire. She shows up. It is a blaze. And the cops, first thing they ask her is like, who would want to kill you? Because it is intentional. Someone broke the gas line and poured gasoline all over and started a fire. And this is in the same neighborhood? Same neighborhood, mm-hmm. right around the corner. So sounds like as, okay. Never mind. As soon as Jim and Detective Ken hear that shit, they're like, "That is the same kind of fire that burnt down the house around the corner." So they drive over to the Perks house. Now this is winter in Ohio. All the cars are covered with ice. They're cold. They've been sitting out. It's the middle of the night. Motherfuckers, van. Is warm to the touch. Of course it is. He's so stupid. It's amazing. This guy. And imagine burning someone else's house down as a way to try and deflect like suspicion off of yourself. Because I'm sure that's what he Uh, was doing, right? Oh, absolutely. He wanted to prove there was like a serial arsonist (laughs) in the neighborhood. This absolute moron got away with murder, you guys. Apparently you can just be a complete buffoon. You don't have to do you don't have to watch anything. You don't have to watch Criminal Minds. You don't have to be smart. No, you certainly don't in the 80s. You know what I mean? It's That's like, true. Yeah, in like 85. So so they're like, your car is like warm, bro. And like your shoes have got mud on them and all that kind of stuff. So they're like, all right, we're 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 doing this. We're full in. Like you're totally burning down the houses. And they charge them with the arson. Meanwhile... They are still digging in to what happened to Meg. So they contact um, her family, who has been against the idea of suicide from the start. In fact, like their relationship, Scott and Meg, was not supported by the family at all from the beginning. Her family wasn't even invited to their wedding. So they were like, they didn't like him. They didn't get good vibes. Meg was like, I'm doing it anyways. Like, she loved him. She was really excited to have her baby. This was a really sad part. In one of the things that they found in her file was, like, a letter that she had written to her grandma that she never got to send about how excited she was to give birth and be a mother. Right. So that's not somebody who's committing suicide nine months pregnant. Exactly. So... They talk to the parents and they're like, listen, we're with you. We don't think it was suicide either. We'd really like to exhume the body. And the parents are like, yep, that's, yeah, let's do this. Let's find the evidence. Because there was no evidence left to test. It was the last resort. So when they dig up the body, and this is real rough. So serious trigger warning. This is the roughest part of the story. Fast forward 30 seconds and I'm going to get through it fast. When they exhume the body, her body has been so well preserved. Whoever like did the funeral the stuff embalming. preserved it yeah. perfectly. And she still had her baby in her arms. And so Aww. they were like, they were like, it was rough. It was like a mother and her infant baby, you know, and but perfectly preserved. So perfect that you could still see the bruises on her neck wow. and back. And when they 
when they looked further, they're like, oh my God, that bruise isn't just from a belt. You can actually see where a knee was mm. from somebody behind her. Okay, so with me. I just got to yeah. say A plus to the embalmer, like shit corner, but A plus to the embalmer. years later. That guy knew what he was doing. Um, but how, how horrifying one just how horrifying to to see per like period but how was this missed like how was this missed how exactly. mad would you be if that was your family member how angry would you be her grandparents probably died not knowing what happened to her because 30 right. years went by because of someone's incompetency like oh oh yeah and luckily n- since that happened, since the 80s, they upgraded from a coroner to a medical examiner who was like immediately like, oh, yeah, this was fucking murder. A hundred. And they were able to go back to their apartment and look at like nothing had been renovated because, you know, it's Stowe, Ohio, and 30 years went by in the blink of an eye and nobody did anything to this apartment. So... This tracks. <laughs> so... So... They looked at it and they're like, no marks on the railing where supposedly she hung herself. And so they tested it out to see like what kind of mark it would leave, like did all this testing. They were like, yeah, it's absolutely impossible. His story does not hold up. So he was convicted of both of the arson fires and received 28 years, but then went to trial for the murder of his wife. And ended up being convicted and found yeah. guilty. And will be spending the rest of his life in prison where he still is today. And icing on the cake, latest update, it is a COVID hotspot. It is oh, literally whoa. the number one COVID hotspot in the mm. United States. And so legitimately, he talked himself into jail. Wow. But see, the one thing that I found, I tried to find and I could not find anywhere was like, what, like, this is a woman that was literally just about ready to give birth. But it kind of seemed like with all of his actions, he just like did not think through the, uh, because I'm like, why? Why? Why did he murder her? Like, what, what happened? But he with him burning down the house to get the insurance money and then burning down another house to try to throw them off the scent. I'm like, he just is really that stupid. He thinks well, he's smart. He's that stupid. And he was emboldened by the fact that he got away with murder. Right. I mean, because mm-hmm. again, like you said, we have this belief that murder is super hard to get away with and that you must be some kind of like genius if you're able to get away with murder. So he was probably emboldened by the fact that 30 years had gone by and he'd gotten away with murder. He had reason to believe that he could outsmart authorities because he'd done it once before you know when in reality he's incredibly incompetent but this is what this is what happens when you give a mediocre man this kind of confidence y'all stop gassing him up Mm -hmm. i don't care how tall they are stop gassing him up he he is he is not even tall he is the most (laughs) mediocre looking person i'm just like oh i mean it's it's just dumbfounding to me oh and i forgot one of my favorite parts. I cannot believe I skipped over this. In between his murder of Meg and him finding Tammy and marrying and settling down and accumulating enough debt to have to burn down his house, he he became the ninja burglar. Oh, that's uh, right. Uh, um, pardon? I forgot that's about this. Right. I forgot about that. Yes. Which I was That's like, when right. Dateline said that, I was like, come again. What? <laughs> he dressed up as a ninja. Stop it. Over like mm-hmm. 50 burglaries where he would break into people's houses, watch them sleep and steal their shit. And he would have, he would carry nunchucks and throwing stars and all kinds of shit. <gasps> what and if this was we- your dad? How embarrassed <laughs> oh would you be? Uh, it's so. So embarrassed. Like, not only is your, like, setting Listen. aside the fact that your dad is a murderer, mm-hmm. like, the fact. And when you look at him, too, when you look at pictures of him, this is a man that dressed up as a fucking ninja. <laughs> Sir, in Ohio, <laughs> my dude. <laughs> 
my thing is, didn't he like just full out come out and admit it too? He yes. just like bragged about it. Like it wasn't like he, they were like, oh, we also think this. He's like, hey, also, by the way, I'm so good. I was the ninja bird. I, oh, yeah. I am offended. I am personally, <laughs> spiritually, <laughs> mentally offended Emotionally. by the fact that this man did crimes and got away with any crimes. So many crimes. <laughs> like, so many crimes. How is that possible? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, all right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> At least he got caught eventually. Good old Detective uh, Ken was like, not on my watch. <laughs> He's like, these other motherfuckers <laughs> that I work with are drunk on the job half the time, but me and Jim, we got it covered, okay? <laughs> we got it covered. I mean, when it falls in your lap like that. Right, you know what I mean? Ken's like, I actually do have to investigate this because I have no choice. This guy <laughs> He's like, I actually really wanted to confess. go home to my wife and kids, but since yeah. you wouldn't shut the fuck up, I'm going to have to do some like, more paperwork. <laughs> Jesus. I was going to watch that new Dateline episode tonight, but wow, I guess I got to go <laughs> I dig up a body. Picture. So I just picture like the back of a cop car. So like he's in the front and he's like, so, you know, what happened tonight, bro? And him just talking about his wife going out on a date. And eating, and I'm just like just seeing him taking it in and seeing the episode and seeing what Ken looks like, too. I'm just it just it astounded me. I was laughing so hard. Perfection. Guy must have been, he's like, I didn't ask any questions literally he just would not shut you know up. what like that's that's the thing that every detective dreams about they're like i have yeah. to put in minimal effort just the minimum <laughs> amount of effort to get the maximum re- reward of a soft case right. like, <laughs> like he's this- like i feel like a fucking hairdresser this is <laughs> instant gratification if i ever heard of it this guy's doing my job for me because like usually like every other episode of dateline is like well, we never forgot about that case, but we had to keep it open for 15 years and come back and investigate it every year and look for new evidence. And in this one, they were like, nope, bada bing, bada boom, and we're done. <laughs> like, <laughs> wrapped up. I just love the fact that he thought he could, like, burn a house down and he's like, okay, but, like, all my family's, like, generational recipes. Well, and, like, and for photos him to say, he, and for him to say, like, wow. I, also, yeah, if you're going to get that shit out of the house, maybe, I don't know, take it to a family member's, drop it off somewhere where you're not going to find it. Like, And then for him to tell the cops, like, oh, well, this is a, a lucky hand that I've drawn mm-hmm. here because right? hey, I'm going to make some money off of this shit. <laughs> it's like oh, and well, icing on the cake when they went back and listened to the 911 call. Oh, yes. Heard the daughter talking. That's right. In the background, they heard him whisper to his wife, oh, God, you forgot the ferret. So apparently he got he got all the cookbooks, but Frankie the ferret. Oh, man. Did not make it out. And when you hear that, because I feel like some people could be like, oh, maybe they met like in the mad dash to get out of the to get out of the fire. They forgot the ferret. But that is not what it sounds like. Like it legit sounds like he had a checklist. (laughs) Yep. of planned things to get out and he's like oh fuck the one <laughs> our pet i forgot our pet oh wow Aww. uh r.i.p frankie the ferret yep and scott Aww. perk the worst worst criminal, criminal ever 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 just have <laughs> never seen anything more incompetent in my life honestly wow how this person did crime tragic for, like 30 some years to get away with it is just astounding mm. to me. So, wowzers. That's that's a good one. My goodness. Well, I think I have my Halloween costume this year. The ninja. The, oh. <laughs> Ooh. I'm just going to wake up. Cassie's going to be watching me sleep. <laughs> She's like, it's Halloween, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All the way in Springfield. I'm like, Hi. Tap, tap, tap. Well, I'll be back on Halloween with your, with your nunchuck. Okay. With your nunchuck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God, uh. yikes. Yikes on bikes. New merch. Go check it out. Um, yeah. Also applies to this situation. <laughs> totally. Uh, so, so what are you guys if, watching this if week? If ever. Hoy. Well, I watched The Social Dilemma. <laughs> oh, how did you take that? Uh, um. Oh, Here's what I'll say about it. 
it it keyed up my anxiety for sure. I it, I was like squirming. Like Anthony was like, I feel you. I feel it like radiating off of you. Like sitting next to me on the couch. Um, however. I mean, it's it's stuff that largely like if you're just kind of like cognizant of how social media works, like you you know these things, but yeah. to have it laid out in front of you the way that they lay it out in front of you, I think it is an important thing to watch just to be aware of the way that these apps are meant to work and the way that they are meant to make you feel um, mm-hmm. is important. And after having watched it, I once again <laughs> got off of Facebook but this time I really Wise. I really intend not to get back on it because what I learned about it as I, I keep telling myself I need to be on there for work but you know what nothing is worth the way being on there makes me feel it doesn't the good there's good stuff on Facebook there like you know there, it's a good way to keep in touch with family there's fun groups there it's a good resource for wedding planning, for doing any number of things. Yeah. But all of that good stuff doesn't outweigh how stressed and anxious and bad it makes me feel 90% of the time. And that's a different, everyone's different in that way. It's This is just me personally speaking about my own like personal experience with it. And so, <clears throat> yeah, at this moment, um, Right now, I have no intention of getting back on it. And watching The Social Dilemma was just kind of the straw that broke the camel's back, the nail in that coffin, where I was just like, all right, mm-hmm. you know what? Actually, I don't need to be yeah. here. So I'm pretty lucky in that I think the reason why Facebook doesn't bother me as much as other people, I think, is because I've kept my shit tight. My shit is a bubble, for sure. And I I do not see, I've kept it so tight that I don't see the arguments. I don't see, I've I've unfriended, blocked, done everything I can so that it literally is like my worst date and my mom, I think for the most (laughs) part. And like funny memes my boyfriend posts. I was going to say the Eric posts, exactly. (laughs) So that's literally, I'm like, Facebook doesn't bother me as much because I don't see the vitriol, which is the reason (laughs) why I think I don't open like Twitter that's the thing is because like it is so much more in my my face there and you could see the fucking comments. I mean, fuck today. I was like, oh. I deleted Twitter off my phone because of all the QAnon Oof. people commenting uh, to Chrissy Teigen. I was like, I that's the most fucking... hateful well, thing I've ever seen in my fucking and life. I, I think the Horrible. other interesting thing about having watched The Social fuck. Dilemma, though, is that it's designed to divide it's Mm -hmm. it's designed to divide us just by the nature of the algorithm like it's designed to create these holes whatever it's by any means necessary to keep you on the app and if that means taking you down a QAnon rabbit hole then that's what that means like if that means you know taking you in one direction or the other until we are so deeply entrenched in in this bubble that we cannot communicate in any kind of actual human way with each other. Like, I I really feel like, but I really feel like even if you hold a difference in opinion in somebody, I just think it's such like, I just cannot fathom the type of person that, that you have to be to make any sort of message like some of the ones that I saw towards a mother who just lost her child. Fucking. It's, uh, it, it's honestly, that's not a difference in political opinion. That's, that's right. not like, oh, well, I, but those I are also think, trolls it, and bots. Are, that's, that's another are, part of it as well mm-hmm. as like, I, I have to keep that in mind running a feminist Instagram page. Like a lot of these nine times out of 10, a lot of these very hateful comments we get, if you click on the page, there's nothing mm-hmm. on there. So they're either troll right. accounts that were created for this purpose to be nasty because they get some kind of release from being an absolute garbage human being. Um, they don't actually have convictions one way or the other. They're just saying things to get a rise. Or they're bots. <laughs> and bots exist all over the internet as well. Um, right. So it, it's because I saw them on Instagram. There were comments on Instagram that were nasty as well. And um, 
Yeah, unfortunately, I, I as much as I enjoy being on Instagram, I kept my Instagram and stuff like that, and I, I enjoy being on YouTube. I do completely believe that this is not how human be- beings were meant to communicate. Like, I don't think yeah. we were meant to interact Truthfully. like this, and for mm-hmm. it to be, for it to make up the majority of our interaction, right? Because we right. we actually communicate with people more on our devices than we do face to face, especially right now. Well, especially now, yeah. yeah. And we're not we're we're I not just... evolutionarily <laughs> developed like that. Like we're not advanced enough to be doing this the way we're doing it. No, there's I think there's definitely there's a gap in tone. There's so much about communication that's more than the words that are in our mouth. Absolutely, that it's that even if you think that you're having a civil conversation with somebody through text, it's like, you don't know how they're interpreting the way that you're saying the words. And it's just like, you're, you're not meant to have a complex no political debate over no. text. It just is not going to work. And again, ever. I'm not at all condemning anyone for being on like social media, like at all. Like I'm still on Instagram all the time. I'm not trying to be like, mm, I'm better because I got off of Facebook. Like not- no, and it's about how you manage it, and not everybody right. can be on it. And I think that that's you know, you and I uh, have discussed this kind of loosely through text, like when our group chats or whatever, where it's like I can go on Facebook and be wholly satisfied with my quick five minutes of just checking to see what Eric posted. That's super funny that I may want to share. Checking it on people. Um, and getting off most of the time, 90% of the time, that's exactly 99% of the time. That's just me. I'm on, I'm off and I'm fuck off. Like I don't get back on, but not everybody can do that either. You know, so it, it does make sense for somebody who feels like maybe they get like a little too, uh, like wrapped in, in, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wrapped mm-hmm. in, right. To just disconnect from it entirely. And that makes sense. Like so you have to do what you have to do. It's for self preservation. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Yeah. You know? For sure. For Me- sure. Mental health this year being what it is, like we are all in a trauma right now. And so you have to be really cognizant, I think, of the things that you allow into your life right now and just make sure that like, yes, my first go to in a trauma is is are my coping mechanisms, a bag of chips, a glass of whiskey, Mm -hmm. or, you know, those those unhealthy things that I'm like, I I feel sad. I'm traumatized. We're all traumatized. So and sometimes that's Facebook or what have you for some people too. So just take a second and I think think to yourself like, would I be better served right now if I'm Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. Does this serve me? Is it actually serving me or is it just um, a warm blanket that I can wrap around myself for a temporary fix, like just a temporary high that I need to get me through, which is fine. I mean, we all have those things that we we need and rely on, but it is important for all of it, for all of it, for the eating, for the drinking, for the being on social media. It is important to step back and examine, is this actually serving me? right now Mm -hmm. is this actually what i need right now yeah you know and sometimes it is sometimes i just need to turn my brain off and and scroll endlessly on instagram like sometimes Mm -hmm. i need that but i i just think you know like anything else it's just an important thing to be aware of that you're doing be mindful of it that's all yeah yeah Yeah. well i watched uh, dateline because i finally got sling Mm -hmm. set up and i also watched a show is so ridiculous, but we were really tired after packing and, and moving and stuff like that. So the very first show we found, I don't even know what platform this is on. It's called Hot, like Hot, H-A-U-T-E, Hot, right. like Hot yeah. Picture, Dogs. <laughs> and it's- yeah! Oh, speaking yes, of like a warm blanket, show. It's, it's, it's a dog grooming competition show. Oh, I love it. it is- and it's British, right? No, it's it's oh, it's okay. American. Um, but yeah, it's 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 so silly. It's over the top. It's cheesy, but it's just Ugh. dogs being groomed and love it. Yeah, I I was that was the warm blanket. That's that what I was I gonna say. Talk week. about just like a cozy, like you know what you know what I need right now. The world is on <laughs> fire and falling apart. I just need to see mm-hmm. some dogs. Like I some just dogs. <laughs> you yeah. know, 
Yeah. So that was that was my week. I fucking binged the shit out of that. So cute. <laughs> so yeah. What about you, Cass? I will. I finished Criminal Minds as far as I could go mm-hmm. because apparently it ends at season 12 and I still need to watch 13, 14, 15. But they're un. I am unable to find them anywhere. I hate it when that happens. I'm so annoyed. Like you've just been completely am, cut off. Can't get your fix. Ugh. And it's not even on CBS All Access, which we have, or I would. I'm like, how do I pay for CBS All Access and you don't even have? You're like, take my money. Thirteen, fourteen, take it. Yeah, you're like already taking my money. Hi, I want, I want the rest of my criminal minds. Yeah, I need you to write a strongly worded letter. Yeah, (laughs) dear CBS, dear sir or madam, (laughs) (laughs) to whom it may concern. Yes, (laughs) (laughs) where is my criminal minds? So I have just honestly, I have just been. I literally spent an hour yesterday just looking for something to watch and ended up starting the show called Virgin River, which is <laughs> <sighs> this that's actually my favorite Netflix show, What to Watch. What is actually wow. just it's just an hour of scrolling through Netflix trying to choose oh, what yeah. to watch. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Guys, it took me forever. So <laughs> I also wow. started watching Hinterland this this Ooh, week. Is that good? Well, I, I have mixed feelings. <laughs> it has yet to grab okay. me. I started watching it because I need a dark like show and because I've been watching shows like Dark and Marianne, mm-hmm. all they're suggesting to me and they look amazing are shows that are in like German or uh. Icelandic. And I'm like, look, these shows look great, but I need to not read subtitles right now. So mm-hmm. I Googled for one in English. And so I started watching Hinterland. It's it has yet to grab me, but I can't stop watching it because it takes place in Wales and their accents are like the best. Th- I find yeah. their accents so comforting is for some mm-hmm. reason. It's like it's like a mix between like a British and a Scottish somewhere in the middle. And it is mm-hmm. it is such an Truthfully. interesting language. I freaking can't stop watching that show because I like the way they talk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I um totally lost what I was going to say. <laughs> there was another show I was going to say that I was going to watch, but I I actually kind of was in this place where I, I, I kind of want something in a background watch. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Precisely. Like, yes, yeah. I don't want to, I don't ne- want something I have to pay full attention to because then I can play like games on my phone. And For sure. This is where I'm at right now. <laughs> well, if you've got shows that we should watch, if you've got stories to tell us, if you want to buy our merch, Yikes on Bikes. Yes, go yes, to our yes. One That's right. Stop shop of a website. It is myworstdatepodcast.com. And we love you guys so much. Also, you guys, if you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, we would super love yes, that too. Yes, please yes. do. That's actually the thing that helps us out the most as far as, you know, talking about algorithms go on the Apple Podcast algorithm. That is the thing that, that's the best thing that you can do for our show. So, yay. Awesome. Well, we love you so much. Cheers. Cheers.